Welcome to Scanner School. We teach you everything to know about the scanner radio hobby. My name is Phil Lichtenberger, and my amateur radio call sign is W2LIE. Today, we are carrying on with tradition. Black Friday is this week, if I have got my schedule correct, and I am recording this well in advance of when Black Friday should be. So as long as I got everything all lined up in my schedule the way they should be, we're all set here, and I'm not lying to you saying Black Friday is this Friday. So with that, we are going to give you our annual holiday buyer's guide. Now, the trick here, though, is that there hasn't been anything new in the scanner radio world over the last, I don't know, two years or so. So I'm not going to sit here and repeat the same podcast episodes that I've given you twice over already. If you want to know my take on what scanner radios you should buy this holiday season, I've got two podcast episodes to listen to. We'll link these right in the description of the podcast. We'll also link these down below if you're listening to this over on YouTube. And of course, we're going to put this in the session notes on our website over at scannerschool.com slash session 205. So the first podcast episode that you can listen to if you want to understand what I would recommend for the holiday season would be podcast session 101. And of course, the following year, which comes 51, 52 weeks later, more or less, would be podcast episode 152. Again, we're going to link these for you right in the description of the podcast. But today, we are talking about software-defined radios and what radios you may want to buy and which ones also to stay away from. I'm also going to give you some accessories that you can possibly look at, maybe as stocking stuffers, you know, to yourself or for people to recommend or or even stocking stuffers, something that somebody can gift to you to help you with your software-defined radio journey. Now, again, I do believe that the future of scanner radios will somehow be part of the software to find radio hobby okay there's a lot you can do differently between the two of them but a lot of what is coming with scanner radios and the development of software and things you can do a lot of it is being tied into the software to find radio world so if you haven't yet jumped into this exciting part of the hobby let the holiday season be an excuse to grab an sdr maybe one that's gifted to you, and start playing around with software-defined radios. Now, again, everything we talk about today, I'm going to link to in the session notes. So they'll be part of the podcasting notes, part of the YouTube notes, and also part of this podcast. There's a lot we're going to talk about in here. Also, if you need help with software-defined radios, you can grab tons of help over in our brand new Discord server. You can go to scannerschool.com slash Discord to be a part of our growing community where we've got real-time communication going on here, real help. It doesn't get any faster than that. Also, if you're the kind of person that likes to go back and, and view things at the end of the day, Discord's great for that as well. Now, before we get any further in this week's podcast, I want to take a few minutes to thank our Patreon supporters. Now, Patreon is an affordable way for you to support the podcast and our upcoming expansion into YouTube for 2022. So think of Patreon as the PBS model of helping out Scanner School. For a monthly or yearly donation, not only do you help support the podcast, but depending on your donation tier, you will receive certain benefits. The most popular benefit tier being our $5 a month, or the $51 a year tier. It's the same tier. We just discount if you can pay us over a year. Now, this tier offers the podcast and YouTube videos early. And also, you receive a free squelchy pack of stickers, several discounts, and access to our monthly live scanner radio roundtable discussion we hold monthly on Zoom. Oh, and by the way, most of the Patreon levels also get a special version of the podcast that does not include the middle advertising break in each episode. Now find out more about Patreon and our supporting tiers by visiting scannerschool.com slash Patreon. I'd also like to take a moment here and thank all of our Patreon supporters. 
Alan Gonzalez, Arthur Heron, Bill Kay, Brandon Sammons, Brian King, Buzz Gold, Chris Paris, Craig Harper, Dan, Dave Pasco, David C., Denny Crowdy, Ed Walsh, Edward Bramlett, Floyd Goff, Glenn Wright, Greg Johnson, Guy Lee, Jack Haycock, Jacques Berry, James Broxton, James Felling, James Peruta, Jay Reed, Jeff Block, Jeff Chapman, Jeff McLeod, Jenny Taylor, Jim B., Jim Heinrich, John Kordoff, John Keel, John Sweeney, John Goldenberg, Joshua Robb, Ken Newberry, Kenneth Fowler, Kevin Zwicky, Lenny Bauer, Les Stevenson, Lynn Smith, Mark Beebe, Mason Kramer, Michael Gorman, Michael Kroger, Nicholas Stenger, Paul Teal, Paul Sesh, Randy Cummins, Raymond Hill, Robert, Ronnie Boss, Sal Marandola, Terry Weatherford, Tim Mazza, Ted Glegai, and William Arcand. All right. So before we get into the list of software defined radios, let's look at the radios that you absolutely need to steer clear from. If you already own these radios, don't feel insulted, please. We all started somewhere. These are the radios that I started with. Okay. So I understand where these radios mm, can kind of give you that false sense of hope, but in reality is they're going to completely turn you off from trying anything with the software-defined radio hobby and just save yourself the hours of aggravation here. What radios are we talking about? We're talking about the software-defined radios that come in a blister pack that ship with an antenna and a remote control. These are the radios, too, that have the soft edges on them, right? They're not rectangular. They kind of have one corner that's rounded off. And typically, they also come with a cover for the USB port that is also rounded off. Nine times out of ten, these software-defined radios also come with an MCX push-on connector and not a typical SMA connector. Look, we all started somewhere. I have a box full of these software-defined radios. It's not a big box, but I've got more than a handful of them. I threw out the antennas and actually, no, I kept the antennas. I threw out the remote controls because they're useless. These software-defined radios are repurposed DVB TV dongles, okay? Their sole purpose in life wasn't for the SDR hobby, Keep in mind, though, they work. These, again, like I'm saying, this was my first set of software-defined radios. And I bought more than my fair share of them, assuming that somebody was going to catch on the fact that these pieces of hardware can be modified and used to receive into an area of the spectrum that scanner radios are not supposed to receive in. So I bought a ton of them, and I still regret it. So if you have one of these software fine radios, they typically come in black or blue. They can have a brand name on them or they may not have a brand name on them. Steer clear, okay? They're going to cause you problems. And the reason why they're going to cause you a lot of problems is because they don't have a stable oscillator. They don't have a TCXO, which is a temperature compensated crystal oscillator. Basically, what happens with these software-defined radios is they tend to heat up, as all software-defined radios do, and then they begin to drift. And what I mean by drift is they go on and off frequency. They could start to come off center, and you'll be listening to a control channel, and all of a sudden, you won't get a good decode on it. Or if you're listening to a P25 system, all of a sudden, the audio is going to get very choppy on you. And again, the reason for this is because the SDR is drifting off of center. This is no bueno, okay? We want an SDR that is stable and that is going to be able to take a little bit of temperature differences and fluctuations and still be a solid receiver. This is what we're used to in the scanner radio world, right? We don't, we don't, we would never tolerate a radio drifting on us. This is not the era of tubes, right? So, Stay away from those. What radio would I recommend? There's a couple to get you started, all sub $40 here in the United States. And again, we will link to all of these in the description below, and these will all be Amazon Associates links. So if you click on it, you'll actually be helping Scanner School with your purchase. Even if you use that link to buy underwear, we still get credit for your BVDs. So if you're going to do some shopping this weekend, hey, Click on this SDR link, 
that you see in the description and go buy some uh, Christmas or Hanukkah presents or whatever you celebrate and help Scanner School out in the process. So, which ones do I recommend here? Newelec SDR dongles is my first recommendation for you. These are great little SDRs. I like these because they are small footprint. You can actually put a couple of these side by side in most USB hubs. They have an aluminum housing on them and they have an SMA connector on them. They're less than 40 bucks. I have a couple of handfuls of these radios. They are great to start off with, and this is one of the two SDRs I strongly recommend new users get into. I also strongly recommend these to anybody who is growing out their software-defined radio setup because you can add plenty of these to your existing SDR stack. Now, the only downfall with these kinds of SDRs is they only receive about 2.4 megacycles per second, which is about 2.4 megahertz of visible bandwidth. So that's all you're going to be able to receive with them. But again, for most applications, this is fine. A lot of trunk radio systems will all fit within one or two SDRs if you buy one of these. So think about that. For 80 bucks, you can listen to a P25 Phase 2 system with a little bit of time invested in it, okay? So these are really, really good pieces of software, or hardware rather, to get started with. My second choice, again, a very strong tie with which one to go with. It's really just a matter of which one can you get your hands on because sometimes one will be out of stock and another times another one will be out of stock. If you can't get the new elect or you want to try something different and you have a new elect, again, I recommend just as much as the new elect, the RTL SDR blog V3 SDR. This is again is another solid performer when it comes to the SDR world. The only drawback with these radios is the fact they are a little bit wider of a body than the new elect. So if you want to stack these together, you either need an SDR uh, hub that is set up to have the I don't know the orientation set up so they're not mounted side by side, but they're born on top of each other, or do you use pigtails. And we'll talk about all this on the second half of the podcast. But the benefit, though, of these RTL SDR V3 dongles is the fact that you can actually receive HF with one of these with no modifications and no extra hardware. Again, we'll talk about this in a little bit, but this is one of the SDRs I definitely recommend for anybody starting up. Again, about the same price as the new Alec. So for less than $40, you've got two options here, the new Alec V4 or the RTL SDR V3. Now, there's a couple of other new Alecs in there. There's like a mini and there's something else in there. They're all just as well. Just do not get the ones with the rounded edges, Okay. Hey, if you got any questions too about which one you should buy, again, our Discord server can really help you out here, scannerschool.com slash Discord. All right, what if you want to upgrade? What if you already have a new elect or an RTL SDR V3 and you're looking for something that's a little bit more money or maybe you don't understand why you'd want to spend more than $40 in a software-defined radio? It all comes to what's under the hood, why would you want a four-cylinder versus an eight-cylinder engine? I don't know, maybe you're not a car guy. Maybe why would you want, I don't know, a scanner that does analog only versus a scanner that does P25, NXDN, and DMR? How about we put it in that perspective, right? The more you usually spend on an SDR, the better the build quality, the better the filtering, the better the hardware that is in there, okay? Case in point here, we'll look at the air spies there's two air spies we're going to look at right now the first one is the air spy mini this is about a hundred dollars of course i own one and everything we're talking about right now i do own so this is something that i can firsthand talk to you about and they can they have six megahertz of sampling if you want a little bit more there is the air spy r2 which allows for 10 megahertz of sweep both of these air spy units receive from about 24 megahertz up to 1700 megahertz. Again, you can see on a screen at one time, 6 megahertz or 10 megahertz. That's a lot of spectrum to physically look at. And a lot of pieces of software out there will allow you to tune multiple frequencies at the same time. 
So imagine having one SDR and slicing it and creating multiple VFOs on there and listening to anything within a 10 megahertz sample size. That's a lot, especially if you're into aviation. Come on, that's great. All right, what else can we do here? If you want to look at HF, you can look at the AirSpy HF Plus or HF Discovery. I don't own either one of these, so I can't speak for them. But I'm sure they have the same type of build quality and filtering as the AirSpy devices. My very first, I'm going to say, real SDR that I bought was an AirSpy. It was regular. It was just called the AirSpy. It wasn't called the AirSpy R2. It was just the AirSpy. And that's when I realized that I was actually starting to take a serious approach to software-defined radios. That was my like, oh, this is no longer a, a $40 piece of hardware. I'm, I'm actually investing some money now. So I've had an AirSpy for quite a long time. Love the AirSpy. And the nice thing about it too is you don't have to play around with any drivers. It just plugs into the computer and you can start running with software. None of that playing with Zydag or anything else like that. All right, what else do we have out there we can play with? There's a Hack RF. I'm sure some of you guys have heard of this one. This is made by Great Scott's Gadgets. The only issue I could see with these units are there's a lot of clones out there on the Hack RF. So you want to make sure you're getting a real Great Scott Gadgets Hack RF device. These do allow you to transmit, which is really cool. So you can do a little bit of manipulation. You can set up your own paging setup. You can do APRS and, and some other stuff you probably shouldn't be doing with this radio. But you can also transmit on 2 meters or 440 or something like that if you have an amateur radio license and play around with amateur radio using the Hack RF. Issues though with the Hack RF is that it's notoriously bad with RF rejection. There is an actual aftermarket kit that shields the main receive on that one. It does require some surface mounting skills. Also, the TCXO on it is is uh, I don't want to be too <laughs> too harsh about it, but let me just say if you're going to buy the Hack RF, you want to buy the new Elec TCXO chip. And then you're going to want to buy the new Alec aluminum case. Because once you throw the TCXO daughter board on the Hack RF, it no longer fits in the plastic case. Trust me, I've tried and I've failed. You have to upgrade to both. So because of those two reasons, the Hack RF can be pushed out of a bit of a price range. You're looking at well over 300 bucks once you get the Hack RF the aluminum enclosure, and the TCXO. But if you want a device, again, that's got a very large footprint as far as what you can receive. The Hack RF is, is, and I've got two of them. It's a fun little device to play around with. All right, what else can we look at here? We can look at the SDR Play devices. The SDR Play device, to me, is like the Cadillac of software-defined radios. Now, there's probably other ones out there I haven't tried yet that are actually nicer than the SDR Play, but to me, this is really a high-level SDR device. There's a lot of hardware involved with the SDR Play, especially when it comes to filtering, rejections, and just how well these devices work. When a lot of people get into SDRs and they become serious about it, and SDR Play becomes one of these pieces of hardware that we really start to get into. SDR Play has already had hardware that has been retired already. So I'm going to tell you as of 2021, there's three flavors. The SDR RSP1A, there is the RSP-DX, which is the one I have, and there's the RSP-Duo. Let's go really quickly on which ones we can look at here. There's three devices to choose from. We just said that. They all receive from one kilohertz up to two gigahertz. You can feed up to 10 megahertz of bandwidth on all of these. They have really great performance on input filters, software selectable notch filters too for AM, FM, and DAB broadcasts. This is great if you're trying to do some AM or FM DXing because you can filter out adjacent 
frequencies from coming in. The entry level RSP1A has a single SMA input. The RSPDX, which is the one I get, I have, has got two SMA inputs and one BNC input with a um, an LF or a low frequency and a very low frequency filter for reception below 500 kilohertz. The RSP Duo has two SMAs and a high impedance input for one kilohertz to 30 megahertz. What does a uh, high impedance input give you? Think random wire antenna. If you just ran a random string, random wire across your yard and wanted to use that for shortwave reception, that's where you would just screw in the end of that wire into your high impedance input. Now, the magic of these devices can be seen when you use SDR Plays software called SDR Uno. SDR Uno is feature rich. The best part about this though is that SDR Play has a great website. They have an awesome YouTube channel. They are very active in the community. They have a ton of resources for you. They even have live Q&A sessions and webinars to help you with the software and hardware. Any one of these other manufacturers and hardware I've listed so far does not do that. So if you're looking for a piece of hardware that has a manufacturer's backing to it and will be there to help you, SDR Play is a great device. Note of caution here though, there are counterfeit SDR plays coming into the market now. Make sure you buy it from a reputable source such as hamradio.com here in the States or go to sdrplay.com to learn more about where you can buy an SDR play device. I don't have an affiliate for this product, just so you guys know. All right. So you can't come to me and say, hey, I want to buy this. I won't earn anything off it. This is my strict or my straight recommendation for you. The other thing to look at too is the software, even though it's made for the SDR Play device, you can still use it on other pieces of hardware by using EXT IO drivers. So if you have a standard RTL device, if you have an AirSpy, if you have a HackRF, you can still take advantage of the software, get a handle for it, and then if you want, then at that point, get into the hardware. So these are some pieces of hardware that I would recommend. Is this the de facto list? Is this all there is out there? Absolutely not. But this is my recommendation to you because this is the hardware that I use. All right. If you were to come into my Radio Shack right now, although I probably can't say the words Radio Shack without getting sued. If you were to come into my basement, sit down in front of my computer and, and open up the the, the totes or the Tupperware things that I keep my SDRs in, these are the devices that you would find in those, in my cabinet, so to speak. Okay. Yes, there's other pieces of hardware out there. Yes, they might be just as good as what I've talked about, but I can't recommend them. I've never used them. Okay. Now, on the other side of this break, we're going to look at some accessories that you can ask for as a stocking stuffer or something that you can use to enhance your software find radio usage. As a reminder, anybody who is a Patreon supporter at a $3 a month or higher level will not get this commercial break. For everybody else, we'll see you in just a few moments. Hey, did you realize it takes us almost $100 a week just to have this podcast episode professionally edited and sent over to you? This doesn't even include website and podcast hosting, administrative help, and other monthly subscriptions that are required to put the podcast out there. Now, you can help us offset these costs when you shop online. So if you're looking for a scanner radio or some software, looking to bid on items over on eBay, or if you're looking to purchase anything, and I mean anything, on Amazon, you can help support Scanner School in the process. And this doesn't come at any extra cost to you. So please check out scannerschool.com slash support for the multiple different ways that we have out there that you can help support us when you shop online. Again, scannerschool.com slash support. Are you looking to learn more about the scanner radio hobby? 
We currently have courses on how to get started and up and running with software-defined radios and how to turn your SDR into a fully functioning scanner radio. With free software, you can see more and do more with trunking than ever before. And with new courses scheduled for the upcoming months, our offerings will be expanding into both Uniden and Whistler hardware and software. Check out our courses at courses.scannerschool.com or by looking for the link in this podcast description. National Communications Magazine is your personal library of scanner, CB, GMRS, FRS, MURS, and two-way radio articles written by the best minds in the business over the past three decades. Your NatCom personal online access account allows you to download the newest issues of America's Hobby Radio Magazine, as well as back issues, too. Visit natcommag.com to download your free sample issue and sign up today. Did you know that a pager can make a great addition to your scanner radio collection. And even if I didn't own East Coast pagers, I still have one or maybe a couple of pagers as a part of my scanner radio setup. This is because a pager can be used to just monitor your local fire department or your regional departments. And if you set it up correctly to alert you when the tones are sent over the air, then the pager will remain silent until you need to know what is going on. This frees up your scanner to monitor everything else that's going on besides your local stuff or can prevent you from missing the local stuff because your scanner is busy doing other things. Now, pagers aren't just limited to fire dispatches anymore. Unication has great solutions to monitor both analog and P25 paging systems where many public safety and police departments are switching over to. Swiss Home and Apollo make great analog solutions as well, and all three still sell POGSAC and Flex pagers, still in use by many departments for text alerting. East Coast Pagers is an Apollo, Swiss Home, and Unication dealer serving the North American market, and of course is one of my online companies. So if you're looking for a personal use pager or one for your department, Contact us for a free quote and let us know you're a Scanner School listener for something a little extra with your order. For all full inventory or request a quote or just to contact us, please visit eastcoastpagers.com. Okay, so let's talk about some accessories for your SDRs. This is where the fun stuff really starts to come in because now, I mean, who doesn't like an accessory or two, right, for something they they already have or if you don't want to spend a lot of money on the big products like the SDR play device, but you still want to gradually get into something, right? So let's talk about stuff like this. The first one I can recommend is a spy verter. Now, of course, if you've guessed I own one, yes, you're right. I have a spy verter, but I've never used it yet. So I really can't speak on to how well it works, but I do know a lot of people are using spy verters. And what is a spy verter? A spy verter is kind of like a transverter that we would use in the amateur radio world. Basically, what a spy verter does, it's a up converter. And it allows you to receive basically HF signals, but you tune your SDR to VHF signals. Basically, what happens is the spy verter is receiving really low, and then it re-oscillates that signal up in the VHF band, which is where you finally tune your software-defined radio. The nice thing about a spy verter is the fact that it allows you to receive now from one kilohertz all the way up to a hundred. Uh, sorry, sixty megahertz, and it works with a lot of SDRs that we might already have, such as an RTL SDR, a Hack One RF an AirSpy Mini or an AirSpy R2. So an AirSpy spy verter is a really good way to start listening to HF with a really good piece of hardware that's got some filtering in place. Again, I'll put a couple of links as to where you can buy these. I don't think any of them are going to be affiliate links for you, but they are going to at least get you to a place where you can buy these globally, where you can buy an air spy. The nice thing too about the spy verter is it's not going to break the bank. A spy verter R2 is going to sit about $49 US. So if you spend about $40 to get 
Inuilek. Now you want to start tuning around to the HF area that's below where the Inuilek can receive. Spyver is not going to break the bank for you. So it's a really, really great way to get into there. All right. What about the Hack RF Porta Pack? These devices are all over the place. A lot of people are talking about the Porta Pack. This is basically a add on board and a case for the Hack RF. The problem, though, is there are more clones out there than I think legit Porta Pack units. It is nearly impossible to find a Porta Pack H2 that is legit. Okay, let's put it that way. I searched low and high to try and find one, and eventually I just ordered one directly from Alibaba, to be honest with you. But I will put links to some of these in the show notes, so you can, at your own risk, buy one off of eBay or Amazon or anything else and see what's going on. But the, the joy and the nice thing about a porta pack, especially when you've got the Mayhem software on there, is the fact that you can use the touchscreen display on the porta pack to see the waterfall in a handheld device, nonetheless. You can, again, receive and see where the airplanes are flying, right? Marine traffic. You can look at TPMS sensors and even look at AS uh, ASCII or APRS, even look at Bluetooth serial numbers that are coming in over the air. There's a lot of stuff that you can do with a porta pack. You can also transmit on a porta pack. So just be aware of what you're doing with that device. It is really cool. It's a novelty a little bit, but at the same time, you can turn off the porta pack and still use the hack RF underneath it on your computer. So it's a kind of a twofer device there. The nice thing also about once you add the porta pack to the hack RF is the TCXO should be built into the porta pack device. So you're kind of saving on that. You don't need the aluminum closure on the hack RF. You're going to use the porta pack for that. So if you haven't bought a hack RF, the porta pack is a little bit of money. Sometimes a little bit extra, sometimes not, depending on where you're getting from. And that's going to scream to you that it's a clone. But if you're going to buy a Hack RF and then a TCXO and then the aluminum enclosure, it might just pay to get a full Porta Pack H2 clone or kit. All right, what else can we look at here? Well, we talked about HF reception. Not everybody's got the room, the real estate, or really the want or need to put up a HF antenna. For short wave, especially when you really haven't played around with it all that much. It's really hard, right, to kind of get into something when you're just testing the waters if you're really not sure it's something you want to do. The U loop magnetic loop antenna works very well and takes up little to no footprint. This is something that you can leave in the house, you can leave on your desk, you can put on a shelf. It needs a little bit of structural support, I'm not gonna lie, but it works extremely well for short wave listening and HF receiving. You really should leave this indoors, but you can take it outside. It's just not watertight. So if you if you can seal it up, put some waterproof tape on it or on the connectors or whatnot, you should be good to go. I have one of these devices. I haven't really played around with it. I was gonna I was hoping to be able to take it outside and, and, and use it before the weather turned cold. We're getting to our last few days of, of decent outdoor weather here. So it's, it's going to be tough for me to actually test out this device. But everybody who is using it is really ranting and raving on how well this works. There's also a preamp. So if your SDR has a bias T output on it, or voltage output, like the RTL V3, RTL SDR blog V3s, you can power up the U-loop and then get a little bit of gain off it too. The beauty of a magnetic loop antenna is the fact that you can turn the antenna and eliminate some of the noise, the electromagnetic noise that actually comes in on it, right? So what actually ends up happening is with the magnetic loop antenna, if I understand it correctly, is you're not really receiving the, the RF side of things. You're receiving the electromagnetic side of the house. I I'm probably got this completely wrong, but it allows you to clean up the noise and hear really well on shortwave and HF. So for that, a lot of people use mag, mag loop antennas. If you want something to go outside, though, the MLA 30 Plus Loop is a great antenna. And again, there's a host of clones on these out there. 
I'm going to put a link to both the U loop and the MLA 30 loop in the session notes again for you there. Again, this one is less than 50 bucks and can be left outdoors. Many SWL users, especially those that are popular on YouTube and other places, all use this antenna. It's less than 50 bucks. It picks up from about 100 kilohertz to 30 megahertz. It's a very affordable way to get into shortwave reception. Can be left outside. And heck, when it gets cold and dark out early and you're looking for something to do and you want to tune around in the bands, and especially if you're playing around with the software-defined radio, see what's out there, an antenna like this really could be pretty cool to play around with. All right, not so much an accessory, but kind of a one-off product that you could say. Again, I've never used this product, but I know a lot of people are, are playing around with it and are really enjoying it, is the P25RX by Blue Tails Technologies. It's basically a standalone box that you pre-program and you let it run. It's a software-defined radio that can run without a computer, basically. So a lot of people are using these for P25 reception. This was one of the first pieces, or I should say this is the first piece of hardware out there that was able to pick up TDMA control channels, basically on a P25 system. Being the fact that it's, again, it's a software-defined radio in a proprietary box with their own software. So it really is a software-defined radio. But if you can find one of these and you want to play around with it, again, something that's the same, but not the same. So just throwing it in there as, as, a, as an extra bonus. All right. What else? would I put on a wish list for accessories when it comes to software-defined radios? There's going to be a quick list right here. We're going to say a powered USB hub. You're going to want more SDRs as you start growing your station. They need power. They need power from the computer to run properly. And your computer can only supply so much current. So you're going to need to have a powered USB hub to supply enough current and voltage to each SDR that you're going to stack on there. That's one thing we're going to look at, right? Powered USB hub. Plus, it's nice too, if it's a powered USB hub with a bunch of switches on it, you can actually turn off all of your software-defined radios when you're done using them. Another thing that I recommend are little USB pigtails. These will allow you to get a little bit of space between the software-defined radios, especially if your powered USB hub has the connectors that are very close together. Something else to look at, too, are SMA jumpers to basically build a bridge between the SDR and the rest of your antenna system. That might include T connectors. It might include Y splitters. Yes, we try not to use these, but the nature of the beast is you've got a $35, $40 receiver. Look, I'm the first guy to say use a multi-coupler, but I've got a ton of T-connectors and Y-splitters on my software-defined radio stuff, okay? That's just the way it's going to be. Well, let's put it this way. When it comes to my Newelec and my RTL blogs, yes, those will get the Y-connectors and the T-connectors. The higher-end stuff goes directly into my multi-coupler. Speaking of which, multi-couplers have BNC connectors on them. So we're going to need something with a BNC to SMA adapter on there. Maybe you need some BNC jumpers. Maybe you need some extra USB cables, especially if you're going to get the SDR Play devices. They take a USB-B connection on the device. Who's using USB-Bs anymore? I don't know. I mean, my, my ICOM PCR 1000 uses one. Does was the 1000 use it? The 1500? I don't, one of them uses it. But I know my old printers used to use those, so I've got a couple of those cables laying around. So if you're looking at an, an SDR Play device, you're going to want a USB cable to go with it. Don't be surprised on Christmas morning or one of your eight crazy nights when all of a sudden you can't plug in your brand new RSP device because you don't have the right USB cable. Think about that ahead of time. If you're using an RSP device, you're going to need a USB cable with a USB B end. That's Bravo end on it. So what's one more thing that I would recommend when it comes to an accessory for your software defined radio? Well, how about our training course? We've got two training courses for you. One is free, which will get you up and running and set up on your computer in about an afternoon. 
You can go to courses.scannerschool.com. Our second course is a paid course, but that course will get you up and running with all of the hardware we talked about today and some of the software, such as HDSDR, SDR Uno, Unitrunker, Trunk SDR, DSD Plus Fastlane, and of course, stuff like SDR Plus Plus and even more stuff. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. There's a lot in that course. So with that, how do we do today? Do we leave anything out that you would recommend? You can leave a comment down below in the YouTube video, or you can join our discussion over on Discord. As a reminder, I need your questions for our next Ask Scanner School session. Go to scannerschool.com slash ask. And if you leave me a voicemail number using 516-308-2885 or our speak pipe, you could be in a running for a free tutoring session. Hey, if you want to even leave me feedback on today's podcast by using one of those two methods right there too, I'll play it on a future podcast episode. And if you know somebody that would benefit from what we talked about on today's podcast episode, please share the podcast. This is how I can help more people with the scanner radio hobby. And that is my goal. So please forward the podcast episode to somebody you know that would really get a kick or a little bit of help out of understanding about what we talked about in today's podcast. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast by clicking on the subscribe button in your favorite podcast player, clicking on subscribe on our YouTube channel if you're listening to us over there, or sign up for our email newsletter over at scannerschool.com. As a final reminder, please join our Discord server, scannerschool.com slash Discord, and we will catch you all again next week. My name is Phil Lichtenberger. My amateur radio call sign is W2LIE. And this is Scanner School, where we teach you everything to know about the scanner radio hobby. And today, the SDR hobby as well. 73.